Hi, I'm Joe Jacobson at Wickham Wanderers and you're listening to Wickham Sound. The Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to this week's edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show. Plenty to bring you this week. Well, as we have every week, in fact. Uh, we'll be catching up with Phil in a few moments' time with a double pre-match... Uh, no, that's not right. That's, that's not what it's called. A uh, double... What's it called? Um... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> one of those. Uh, looking back at the uh, game against Derby County and Accrington Stanley as well. Uh, we'll also look ahead, of course, to the visit of Bolton Wanderers uh, this coming Saturday as well. Set to be a great game at Adams Park. We'll reflect on the uh, sad news of uh, the passing of former Wickham Wanderers manager and chairman Brian Lee. We'll hear from uh, two people who've played under him. That's John Maskell and Bob Davis. Uh, we'll hear from Alfie Mawson as well, who, uh, in other sad news, has had to uh, announce his re- retirement from football this week. We'll hear from Gemma Dunn, who's a new signing for Wickham Wanderers Women. Uh, we'll catch up with uh, half-term heroes, uh, Jack Grimmer and Gareth McCleary, who have been at uh, the Eden Shopping Centre signing, well, all sorts of things, to be honest, uh, this afternoon. And we'll hear from the manager as well, uh, Gareth Ainsworth, who'll be uh, uh, rounding up uh, basically all of that. Uh, that's all to come in the next hour for you. But first, I'm very pleased to say uh, Phil has uh, has um, spared time to chat to us uh, on our uh, our match debrief this week. Yeah, the, the start with the derby game because a huge game on many different levels, really, because there's obviously the narrative of their fans not being overly enamoured with our club and our chairman. That added a bit of spice to it. Um, the away end was incredibly loud uh, until Wickham scored. I thought Sam Vokes' goal really sort of shut them up a bit. But then Wickham... I think Lewis Wing and Josh Scohan, brilliant in midfield. And I have to give credit to, to Stephen in the uh, recruitment department uh, up at the training ground because he told me a great stat this week. Um, we average 0.5 of a point more per game when Lewis Wing and Josh Scohan play together. And you can really see why against Derby County because they ran that midfield. And this is a Derby County who hadn't lost since October the 21st in the league. And that was an away uh, defeat away at Ipswich 1-0. Um, so this was no mean feat, but I thought Wickham was superb. We saw the real character of the team as well because at 1-0 they missed a, a guilt edge chance for Jason McCarthy and then Derby County equalised and you could maybe sense the momentum swinging and then you kind of think, oh, I've read this script before. It's going to be a Derby County going on to get a winner. But Wickham dug in and dominated, I think, the next 10, 15 minutes and deservedly went back in the lead. And then the, the third goal, which proved to be incredibly important, was was wonderful to see Lewis Wing get his second of the game. Great assist and great story for TJ DeBar as well. But I thought it really showed the character of the team and a big, big, big three points uh, in terms of the top six because everyone keeps winning up there. So it's really important that they kept that momentum going. And really nice as well to kind of take that into, into Tuesday night as well because uh, I'm sure anyone will tell you, and probably including yourself, that, that Accrington's a tricky place to go uh, on a Tuesday night in February. I mean, I've been to Accrington on a, on a Saturday game and got out of the car once to see the game get called off at one o'clock and then got back on the motorway again. It was a terrible journey up there. We arrived eight minutes before kickoff. Fortunately, the team were up there the day before, so it was all right. But yeah, the, the, the team... Very different performance to Saturday, and it had to be. The pitch was incredibly lively. Uh, Accrington are down the bottom and they're scrapping, and they're really putting a shift in for their manager, but um, I think maybe lacking a bit of quality up top. But Wickham had to show a different side to their game to get the three points. And, you know, we won't remember the game much at the end of the season, perhaps, but that three points could be absolutely vital. Josh Gowan, wow, what a goal that was as well. Um, so get things kick- kicked off. But... Chem Campbell in the build-up as well in his first start for Wickham Wanderers was an integral part of the move that led to the goal. Uh, Jordan Willis, his first start for Wickham Wanderers after his brief appearance off the bench on Saturday. Uh, how important will he be now, especially with the news that Alfie Mawson's retired? Um, so loads and loads of positives uh, on top of the result as well uh, on, on Tuesday night in what is a huge eight days for the club because Derby, Accrington, Bolton... Gareth will tell you that those results won't define the season, but the fans were looking at that thinking that's going to be a huge indication about where we're going to be. We've got six points out of the nine so far with three to go. I think the win on Tuesday takes the pressure off a little bit on that Bolton game and maybe means we can really have a proper go at them. Um, But they're in fine form. But yeah, Josh Goins is also in great form. His goal was fantastic and uh, he doesn't do a lot of interviews, but I always do like chatting to Josh and it was a pleasure to speak to him after the game. Just fell to me nicely on the edge of the box and I managed to connect with it sweetly and lucky enough for me and it went in. So. A crisp par folly, I think I called it, is that right? <laughs> yeah, it was, as I say, I caught it nicely, but it, it the way it came out to me, it was just perfect and I was eyeing it up for a while, but... Um, yeah, caught it sweet in. Anyone you'd like to dedicate that goal to today? Uh, you know, my, my good friend Alfie, you know, it's, it's a tough time for him at the minute, but um, 
he's got good people around him and I know he'll do well for whatever he does after football. What's been the reaction of the squad to that news? Obviously, it's been coming for a few days now. What's been the reaction? Um, obviously, as a team, we're devastated to lose him in terms of on, the, of on the pitch. But, you know, like I say, he's got good people around him and all the boys are wishing him well for whatever he decides to do after. You know, he's got a good head on him, so I'm sure he'll be successful in, in life after football. Momentum seems to be going Wickham's way now. This is a really nice little run we're building. Yeah, the boys are confident, you know, as long as we can keep keep getting results and keep pushing forward, you know, confidence is going to grow and come and... Yeah, hopefully we're in the right, right place coming into the season. And the big games just don't stop because we've got Bolton at Adams Park on Saturday and that's going to be an absolute cracker as well. Yeah, you know, another big game, but, you know, at home we back ourselves against anyone like we showed against Derby. So, you know, like I say, we're, we're in a confident place and we, at the minute we're getting stronger and stronger. And your own personal form as well, Josh. I mean, we had Danny Sender with us on comms on Saturday, waxing lyrical about your performances and the fans are as well. Where do you get the energy from still? I get exhausted watching you. Oh, no, I don't know. I just, you know, once I cross that white line, there's a different man out there. But, um, yeah, like I'm enjoying my football and, I say, my, my form at the minute I believe is good and, yeah, the, t- the team the team helped me. And, and um, yeah, like I say, we're in a good place and we'll, we'll carry on. I mentioned that it's tight up the top, but the experience of last season cracking into the top six on the final day, is that going to stand Wickham in good stead? Um, yeah, I say we've got that experience from last year and we can we can use that this year and um, like I say, build and you know we've, we, with the squad we've got, we've um, we've got the players that are capable of getting into the playoffs um, and I think we've showed that the last few weeks. Now, you're on record as saying it's normally just one goal a season from you, but you, you've doubled that now. Are you going to set a higher target now? <laughs> oh, who knows now? <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> well, maybe one Saturday would be good. Yeah, it would be lovely, yeah, but like I say, well, as long as we keep winning, that's what matters. And something that really stands out as well is that, you know, another clean sheet uh, and, and we can really not conceding or, or, and scoring plenty at the moment as well. Yeah, I mean, what would have been lovely just for the uh, for the stats nerds like me, had we got another goal at Accrington to win three 0 then that would have been three away games consecutively that we'd won three uh, 0 That would have been lovely, but yeah, two 0 was good enough for us really. But yeah, the, the shutouts are what's what's really important because obviously if you then nick a goal against a run of play and don't play well, you still win the game. I think defensively, it's been really challenging this season because of injury. We have a different shape, a different set of personnel back there most games, but they all know the system. They all stand up and and, uh, and get counted. I think Jordan Willis looked good. He, he came off with cramp just before the hour, which is to be understood. He hasn't played a game for two years, but hopefully he can get his match fitness up quickly. He could be integral. Big Chris Farino came off the bench and was brilliant. I think there were two headers before we got the second goal. Um, as Akronson were piling on the pressure that were absolutely fantastic. Um, if he can now stay fit between the end of the season, that would be quite handy as well. Um, but big Max in goal as well, made a couple of good saves when called upon. And yeah, it's a solidity that's what, what we're building this all on, really. Um, we've got a great attacking players going forward. I know the opposition fans, Derby fans, made a big thing about us being one-dimensional, time-wasting, long-ball merchants. But, you know, if you're listening to this away fans, think that because uh, there's more to Wickham than that. Um, as you'll find out on Saturday, hopefully. Really interesting when you spoke to the manager after the game as well, the adaptability of the the team, how he changed things in the second half. Yeah, great. The double sub up top, McCleary and TJ DeBar. I think I described it on the night as almost changing the speed of a record player because Accrington, it was all going. It was all going towards the Wickham goal. But then the double sub just completely changed the tempo of the game and it meant that Wickham could then get a bit more control and it was a double sub that led to the second goal. Another assist for TJ DeBar and a brilliant finish by Gareth McCleary as well. You know, he's 35 years old. I didn't expect him to start against Accrington on a Tuesday night, but he, he had to do the journey, came off the bench, sealed the points, and I'm sure he'll play a big part against Bolton Wanderers. And Tuesday, obviously, when we heard the news about Alfie, it obviously really devastating for him and, and, and fans as well, who really appreciate his contribution in both spells at the club. Yeah, 29 years old, it's heartbreaking. And, you know, let's be honest, he wouldn't be playing for Wickham Wanderers if it wasn't for his knee. But we got 21 games out of him in the summer and his form was electric. And it really shows you that if you look when the January transfer window was open, if you look on the Wickham Wanderers form and on Twitter, a lot of our fans were convinced he wasn't playing because he was going to move to a championship club. Such was his form. Sadly, did they know that the actual truth was that he was starting to feel his knee and then that led to a precautionary break and then it led to a, a scan which has then delivered him at this decision he's had to make. You know, he was in a huge amount of pain after games. And um, But what I love about this story is that in the summer, he'd fallen out of love with the game. He didn't like football anymore to the point where he thought he was going to have to retire then. And he said he had he done so at that point, he probably wouldn't have been able to watch football again. This spell he's had at Wickham Wanderers means that he loves the game again. 
He's a Wickham Wanderers fan, which is wonderful now. The whole family is. And who knows what the future holds for him, but I know what it does hold for him in terms of that he'll be a Wickham fan. He'll be regularly at games and he's not going to disappear off the training ground now. He said he's going to stick around and he, he's passionate about imparting his knowledge onto our younger defenders as well. Great guy. There's a great interview with Alfie on, on this week's um, pre-match drills and that'll be up on Wanderers TV as well. And uh, it's a bit of a tearjerker, Colin. Oh, after Valentine's Day as well. Heartbreak on Valentine's Day. I mean, I know. <laughs> but but hopefully uh, uh, some better news to come on Saturday because obviously the la- last home game was against Derby and there's a brilliant atmosphere there and I'm sure another opportunity for fans to, to come along a, a, and witness a great occasion on Saturday. Yeah, this will be another big game in terms of attendance. Bolton travel really, really well and they're in fabulous form so their fans will be in good voice. Uh, the slight difference is, is that Bolton fans like us um, so that's quite nice. Um, that goes back to when they nearly went out of business and opening day of the season uh, they had a hugely warm welcome from Wickham fans and, and we'll always remember that I've been told so um, so slightly less edge on this one but nonetheless Wickham fans need to turn up for this and get behind the boys because this is going to be an immensely tough game and I think with the last two results it takes the pressure off this one this isn't a, a make or break the season sort of game but three points would be incredibly handy and especially with the way they've been pre-scoring in the last couple of matches as well. Yeah, two f- five nils on the bounce. They've won five consecutive games. They've got goals coming in from all over the area. They won five nil against MK Dons on Tuesday and no striker scored in that game. So it shows you there's danger throughout the pitch. Um, so yeah, Wickham will have to be on their metal on, on Saturday. But they're facing a team who've, who've won their last four as well. Yeah, this is great, isn't it? This stage of the season, two form teams coming together. Even if you're, if you're listening to this and not a Wickham Wanderers fan, if you're a neutral, come down because this game will be fascinating. No, definitely. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Colin. Always great to have Phil on the show. Of course, you can hear in full those uh, interviews with Josh Cohen and also Gareth speaking post-match at uh, the Derby and Accrington Games as well. And as Phil mentioned, you'll also hear uh, in full uh, his chat with Alfie Mawson. Uh, here's uh, a brief taster of what you can expect. I was nearly in this situation in the summer, so I've, s- I've started to get things going in my mind to to sort of, you know, e- ease it. Um, but I said to the gaffer and Beth and all close to me that if I had retired in the summer, being the last few years I had as successful as they were on paper, I had fallen out of love with the game. So um, I said to the gaffer that I probably wouldn't have even bothered watching football again. Um, I was that out, you know, distant from it. I was just seeing it as something that I've loved for so long that I, you know, that I unfortunately, I'd, like I said, fallen out of love with. But coming back here has been bittersweet because again, I've, I've I can safely say that I've fallen back in love with it, which is, which is great because it reminds me of when I first came here and and being a kid and just enjoying what I'm doing. Um, but obviously, the the with a bit of taste that now I've got to finish. But um, I'd much rather finish in in this mindset than the one that I was in in the summer. Um, you know, I've, uh, I've I've done what I wanted to do. I, w- I wanted to get some more games on my belt. I wanted to finish playing and uh, to go out the way I did. Uh, in, in the win against you know a side that were tipped for automatic promotion um, yeah no I'm really really happy online on radio player and on 106.6 FM this is Wickham Sound still to come on this week's edition of the Wickham Wanderer show we'll hear from uh, one of the new signings from Wickham Wanderers women and we'll hear from uh, the manager in full looking ahead to the visit of Bolton Wanderers on Saturday and uh, previewing what's been uh, a week of uh, mixed emotions for the club two wins uh, but also as we heard uh, Alfie Mawson retiring from football and also on Sunday it was announced that uh, former manager and chairman uh, Brian Lee had passed away not too long after uh, his wife as well and uh, Gareth uh, paid tribute shortly afterwards Text me on the uh, on the Sunday and, and told me that his dad had passed away. Um, and one of the last things he did was a fist bump to to celebrate the three two win against Derby, which shows how much Wickham meant to to Brian. But we want to we want to tell the family how much Brian meant to Wickham. You know, um, without him, this club would not be anywhere near it is today. Um, people like him are, are lost in a lot of clubs, but this club fortunately take their history really seriously, and uh, and I'm sure that. Um, his name will, will live forever here and I uh, want to try and pay the respects due to, to such a great man. Indeed, and also uh, you can hear our interview with uh, Brian from the first series of this show on the website at wickhamsound.org.uk. Uh, I've been speaking to John Maskell, who of course uh, made over 700 appearances for the club, uh, many of those under Brian Lee, and uh, here are his memories. Brian 
was a great friend of mine. He wasn't only a excellent manager, but um, as I say, over the years he became a great friend of mine. And right up until the last few days, um, I kept in touch with him either through um, a phone call or um, he belonged to the, as you know, the Ex Players Association, and he was on the committee there with myself. Um, I remember when Brian was first appointed in the late sixties. And as a young player, thinking he was completely different to all the previous managers I'd actually played under, he was certainly his own man, you know, because um, he came to the club and stamped his authority on the club almost immediately. He took some decisions that weren't accepted at the time, but um, he was proven right at the end. Uh, He disbanded the reserves, for instance. He got rid of the team selection committee and started releasing the current players and bringing in his own players. In fact, I think I'm right in saying that after a couple of seasons, Tony Horseman and myself were probably the only players remaining from the original team uh, when he was appointed. I quickly realised how good his management skills were, and he changed the club from an average setup to what became probably the best non-league club in the country. So, um, you know, that was my first recollection of him, really. And when you look at the the football club as it is today, they've done brilliantly, but I I suspect that when you go back to the late 60s, early 70s, if it hadn't been for Brian Lee, I often wonder where they would have been at this moment in time. How would you describe his management style? He didn't get emotional. You know, you get some managers who they've all got their own um, idiosyncrasies. But um, Brian was always, um, you could always rely on him to be um, sensible. He certainly gave you confidence because he was a confident man himself. And when I look back, you know, even the games that were the most important games, he never lost his temper. He always talked in a logical way. And um, he always analysed the game properly, in my opinion, anyway. And the only thing, the only time I can remember, he did have a little bit, he went off um, off piece um, once, and that was when we we played Cardiff City away in the FA Cup. And um, it was very out of character for Brian, but it was a terrible, terrible weekend, freezing cold, and most of the games were off. But we were playing at Ninian Park, and um, we drove down there, and uh, we got to about half a mile from the ground, and we were early, and Brian said, why don't you stop the coach? He said, uh, we're all going to get off now, and we'll walk the rest of the way to the, the ground. And we couldn't believe it, because most of us only had our blazers anyway, ties and what have you, shirt and ties. And um, he did that, and it was very out of character. But in actual fact, it was it was we were all moaning and groaning. But in actual fact, he was right because um, we were sat on the coach for quite a long time, and we started off the game unbelievable, and we should have been two or three up in the in the first half hour, but we missed a few chances, and um, then we went on to lose one nil. But I'll never forget that it was something that he did just as a one off, and. Uh, I always think, um, you know, when I look back, he was probably right to do it. No, it's brilliant to hear those sort of stories, and I guess it must be really hard to sum up, you know, that the impact he had on, on both the team but also the club as well. Yeah, he had a big impact, as I say. I don't think they'd be where they are today if it wasn't for Brian. He was very honest. One of the advantages of playing for Wickham in those days was that Brian knew everybody in football and everybody knew Brian. I mean, he, it was unbelievable, the, the contacts and the people that knew him. And um, we were fortunate because, unlike other players of my era, in other teams, in other good teams, even in professional teams, they never got to play, play against players that we got to play against. Because he was director of Bisham Abbey, I remember playing against Wales before they played Scotland in the World Cup. They were staying at Bisham Abbey, and um, we played them in a uh, full game. People like John Toshak and you know Gil Reese, all the internationals, Mike England, and um, yeah, it was only through Brian really because he had so many contacts. And then another time when 
when the whole country was almost shut down because of the the weather, um, we played, uh, Brian Clough was staying with Derby County at um, Bisham Abbey, and we played them in Lokes Park behind closed doors in a friendly, and that was some experience as well. The other thing I should say as well is when we went, we, we, we used to go on tour once a year, either to Italy, Greece, places like that, and wherever we went, we were treated really like a, a, a big side, because Brian invariably knew the um, the people who were in charge. I'll give you an example. We we played in Greece. We played at AEK uh, against the Greek under-23 internationals. And that was because Brian knew Billy Bingham, who was the current Greek um, international football manager. And uh, Billy Bingham met us at the hotel. And, and uh, you know, it was, a, it was quite an experience. And um, it was all through the likes of Brian and um, his contacts. And how would you describe Brian's sort of philosophy of football, the way he got you to play? It was simple, actually. He wasn't one of these that um, complicated things. He believed that um, if you try to play the ball forward, you're always behind the ball to defend if you give it away. And uh, one of the things he hated, and it's amazing, and you'll probably laugh at this because watching football as you do, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. He hated anybody playing it square. He said, if you play it square and it gets cut out, you've knocked out four or five of your team. And he did. He, if you played it square, any of the players, he used to have a little dig at you at half-time. And, um, but nowadays, of course, they do it all the time. They play it square and back. And, but Brian always believed in attacking football, playing the ball forward, and... He, his, his main thing really was get the ball forward and um, win the second ball. And we always had a, a reasonable centre forward anyway. And uh, he believed in getting the ball forward, as I say, very early. A bit like Rickham today, actually. Gareth plays the same sort of way. He gets the ball forward very early. Whereas other teams, you know, they like to build up and take their time and uh, play it back to the goalkeeper. And But... But no, Brian was, um, he, was uh, he, he, liked, he liked to play simple, but attacking football. So how would you say Brian should best be remembered? Well, I think he should be remembered as a, he's actually a legend at Wickham, isn't he? I mean, uh, he's, he not only managed the club, he was chairman. He was involved in appoint, appointing other chairmen. He was involved in appointing um, managers, good managers who who did well for Wickham. So um, I think I think he should be remembered for all those things, and um, I would like to see the club do something very special for him. No, I'm sure that would be fantastic. And I guess uh, one of the reasons why you, know, why you played for the club uh, as long as you did. That's right. Yeah, I was very lucky because when I, as I say, when he came to the club, I was already there anyway, and uh, we were just an average team, really. And when he came to the club... I did have my doubts, but as I say, he changed it completely. He got rid of most of the players that I played with, apart from Tony Horseman, and um, brought other players in. But I look back and think, well, you know, he, he was actually correct. If the club was gonna, going to pro, uh, progress as um, we all wanted, then um, he needed to change things, and that's what he did. And how will you remember Brian as a, as a person, not just as a, as a manager? Well, I think I can only speak for myself, obviously, but I got to know Brian because um, I probably got to know him better than most players because I suffered from trouble sickness. And when we went on uh, away trips, I'd invariably sit up the front of the coach and um, Brian would come and sit next to me and uh, we'd have long chats leading up to the games um, and uh, I, I, I personally think he um, he certainly um, didn't change my life but certainly um, affected me in, in different areas I used to talk to him about everything from football to politics to life in general and uh, I really did look up to Brian I thought he was um, he was an excellent guy to um to uh, look after young players like myself. Um, and uh, I had a lot of, lot of time for Brian. Um, I think he was, um, as I say, 
uh, for me, he was Mr. Wickham, actually. Really nice to hear uh, the tribute there from John Maskell and uh, someone else who joined the club uh, when Brian uh, was coming to the end of his uh, managerial time was Bob Davis. The reason I ended up at Wickham was Howard Kennedy. He's got a lot to answer for, Howard Kennedy, or he did have. I was at college, PE college in Leeds with Howard, as was John Priestley. And Howard left a couple of years before we did and came down to Wickham. And it was Howard that suggested we move south, try to get jobs down south. And um, that's how we ended up playing at Wickham Wanderers. Are you actually signed by Brian? Yeah, Brian was, well, he was the outgoing manager. He was just, he just finished at the end of the 76 season. And I started playing in the 76, 77 season. So I'm not sure who technically put pen to paper. I think it probably was Brian, yes. But I didn't actually play for Brian other than the Anglo-Italian tournament mid-season. And what are your memories of Brian, both you know, briefly as a manager, but also during his time at the club that, that you sort of witnessed? Yeah, well, it's difficult for me to comment on Brian as a manager because I, I only played two games under him as manager. And in the first one of those, he helped me off after 30 minutes. So um, at the time, I probably wasn't that impressed. But I know he was and had been a, a fantastic manager for Wickham Wanderers. I only got to know him in his role as chairman of the club. And obviously, you know, he's an absolute legend of the club and everyone connected with Wickham Wickham Wanderers has got an awful lot to be thankful to Brian for. And it must be nice for you to be arriving at that time with, as you say, John Priestley as well, and just sort of the two of you getting established in that team. Yeah, it was. You know, it was a big move for us both because we're both northern lads. So, you know, to move down south was quite a big move. And then... Obviously, to take a step into you know what was semi-professional football, then obviously it was a big move. But Wickham Wanderers was then and still is a great football club, and so it was it was very easy to settle in. And you know when I look back now on the the teammates that I had when I first joined, it was brilliant. And obviously Howard uh, was a big factor in that because when you've known you know somebody already, it does make it much easier to settle in. So it was, yeah, very fond memories. I also knew Derek Harris as well, who also came to Wickham in the, the time that I was there. Was it a bit frustrating in a way, though, because I don't, you couldn't play in your preferred position, could you, because of a, a certain Paul Bird's eye? Indeed. That, if I look back on my time at Wickham, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, I had a great time there, and I thought it was a fantastic club. But if I look back at my own performances and, you know, there would be an overall sense of frustration uh, as well as enjoyment. Um, and that's the main reason, because for the five or six seasons that I was there, I never played in what I thought to be my best position. I, my best position was right back. And of course, you know, Paul was already there and I wasn't going to oust Paul Birdseye. So they, they were looking for a left back, really. And so uh, Ted Powell, who was the manager in my first year there, he converted me into a left back and... You know, and I stayed there for virtually all my career. And I think I did okay. But if I was to rate myself as a player over that time, I would say I don't think the Wickham fans saw anything more than sort of 80% of my best, not in terms of effort, but in terms of ability, mainly because I was playing out of position a lot. Although, did you feel that was quite a good sign of your versatility that you were able to, to switch to different defensive positions? Yeah, it was. I mean, I was... You know, from that point of view, it was uh, it was pleasing, and you know, as I say, I think I did okay playing on the left side. I didn't find easy at all because I'm naturally right-footed. I also played at centre back. I had the odd game in centre midfield, and I even actually had a couple of games in goals, which you may or may not be aware of. But uh, so yeah, it was it was nice to to be versatile. But um, it would have been even better if I could have been playing in my own position. But hey ho, that's the way it was. And I guess the infamous slope must have had an impact on that as well. It did, yeah. When I was on that bottom side, trying to get crosses to the far post with my left foot was um, was a bit difficult. <laughs> Hitting them down from the top side wasn't too bad, but um, knocking them uphill was a, was a little bit difficult, yeah. It was a, definitely a factor, and it's something that, as a fullback, uh, I had to learn very quickly. And I guess as a defender, you, you wouldn't be expected to get too many goals, but I understand there are a couple that you're particularly proud of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a, as a defender, you, you know, your main job obviously is to keep the goals out. But um, yeah, I did get a couple. Probably the best one in terms of the importance of it was uh, when we beat Worcester City in the fourth qualifying round of the FA Cup 
I think it was about November 1980, that season. And it was a replay at Lokes Park. Um, I can't remember whether I was playing left-back or centre-back that day, but I know I went up to the corner and uh, managed to get up in front of the keeper and nod one in, and it turned out to be the winning goal. So that was a good one. And also, I guess it must be quite a disappointment in the end because you, you know, it must have felt like a would have been quite a nice way to end your, your time at Wickham, but getting to the FA Trophy semi-final against Altrincham is, is something that really stands out as well. Yeah, that, that was a big, big disappointment. I mean, it's, I think it's every footballer's dream to, to play at Wembley and getting to within, well, two, it was a two-legged semi-final in the FA Trophy against Altrincham and... Uh, we had a good result in the away leg. Uh, we got a draw up there. And then to come back to Lokes Park, sadly we lost 3-0, I think it was. And unfortunately, probably as a team, it was one of our worst performances, I think. And we just didn't turn up on the day. So that was a, that was a huge, huge disappointment, you know, to miss out on a, on a Wembley final. It would have, would have been a dream come true. And something which really stands out from speaking to ex-players is the kind of relationship and rapport that you have with your, your teammates. And you mentioned a couple of the names, but there must have been so many during that time that you got on so well with. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the sort of the names roll off the tongue, really. I mean, that, John Maskell and Tony Horseman, two absolute legends that were coming, they were coming to the end of their careers. So I, I think I only played one or maybe two seasons with both of them. And, you know, our regular back four... In my first couple of seasons was Paul Verdi, Keith Mead, Alan Phillips, Bob Davis. They were, they were great characters, you know, great characters, great players. Midfield, I had Mickey Hollyfield playing in front of me, and there wasn't a better midfield player in the Isthmian League, and not many better midfield players playing football than Mickey Hollyfield and Howard Kennedy. And up front, you've got Bodger scoring goals. And also in my first season, we had Ian Pearson, who... I know he was only there for a season, but I think he must have scored nearly 40 goals in that first season. He was a, he was a terrific player. Some, some really good people and, uh, you know, it, a lot of them, you know, consider friends, even though it's a long time ago that we, since we played together. No, absolutely. And how did you find combining work with, with playing as well? Um, it wasn't easy, uh, I've got to say. And that was one of the reasons in the end that I decided to finish when I did, because it was becoming increasingly difficult to combine the demands of the work with playing. And I was always the sort of person who, whatever I was doing, I wanted to make sure I could give 100% to it. And if I couldn't give 100% to, you know, to what I was doing, I wasn't happy in myself. And I was doing well in my career, but in doing well, the demands became more and more. So um, it did become more and more difficult. And, you know, that that was a factor in the fact that I did finish probably earlier than maybe I might have done or people expected me to do. But as it's turned out, I was, you know, I pursued my career and did well in my career. And so it was probably not a bad decision in the end. So overall, how do you look back at your time at Wickham? Uh a great deal of enjoyment, a great deal of pride, um, and a sense of frustration. <laughs> but it's um, it's always it's always lovely to look back on my time there because, as I say, it was such a great football club. The the players that were played with were fantastic. There was a really good camaraderie there. The supporters were superb. I can't speak highly enough of the support we got. Um, they were always with you and behind you and supported you. And it's just so nice now that I've you know, seen how Wickham have done since those days to be able to say, I used to play for Wickham Wanderers. And, uh, you know, even so many years on now, and even living up here in Leeds and Yorkshire, if, you know, if it happens to come up in conversation and say, oh, I used to play for Wickham Wanderers, I say, really? You know, and so I take a great deal of pride in the fact that uh, I managed to represent the club um, over a number of seasons. And Preston, also a club close to your heart, you must have had really uh, split loyalties in 94 at Wembley. <laughs> I, I certainly did, yeah, that was... Uh, it, well, it, you could look at it as either a no-win situation or a no-lose situation for me, that one. Because whoever won, I was going to be happy for, and whoever lost, I was going to be unhappy for. So, yeah, uh, I've been a Preston North End supporter all my life, and uh, they've always been the team I've supported. So Preston North End and Wickham Wanderers are the two results that I always look out for first.
I was going to say, you must be very fond of, of seeing how the team, how well the team is doing now, especially under a former Preston player. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just got uh, an added attraction with, uh, with Gareth being there as manager. And uh, if you ever talk to any Preston North End supporters and you mention the name Gareth Ainsworth, he is still recognised as one of our best players. He's absolutely loved up here in Preston and at the football club for what he did, did as a player. And uh, I think there have been a, new, a number of occasions when Preston have been looking for a new manager and um, his name often gets linked with it, rightly or, in, or wrongly. But, uh, oh yeah, it's, uh, it's just an added factor in the connection between the two clubs. Well, it's been a real pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much for your time. You're very welcome. Very enjoyed catching up with uh, Bob Davis, a uh, former teacher from Brentwood in Downley, uh, and also Wickham Wanderers defender as well. Speaking of defenders, we'll switch our attention now to Wickham Wanderers women, who uh, have been doing pretty well of late, both in the league and cup. Uh, January signing Gemma Dunn, uh, who is also... Uh, riding the crest of uh, the current success as well in both the league and cup, as I say, who uh, signed from Andover. I was at Andover New Street Football Club, because uh, that's where I come from. I had to move to Wickham because I got a job at Bucks University, so trialled with you know a couple of teams around the area and just decided Wickham was kind of the one for me. So how have you found it so far, sort of the integration in the team and just sort of settling in? It's been really easy, to be honest. You know, it's a great group of girls. You know, they're all really lovely. Coach has been really welcoming as well, which has um, kind of been the reason why I chose them. And obviously your position as well, being, being a centre-back, that must be quite a sort of a responsibility and, and quite a thing to kind of get started with. But you, you've got a good record so far. Yeah, you know, it's quite nice to have, uh, I think it's three games now and three wins. Um, so it's always quite positive being a centre-back. But yeah, it's the players around you as well. You know, um, they've been really helpful, obviously, getting used to how the team play and things like that. Um, and I'm just learning more and more each game, really. So what would you say have been your first impressions? You know, it's really enjoyable. Um, every session, you kind of get something new um, and quite quite full on. You know, they, they do take things quite seriously, which is quite nice. And everything is quite a high intensity, which is good. Do you notice uh, yourself that there's been a real increase in interest in, in women's football generally? Yeah, massively. Yeah, especially, obviously, since... The win at the Euros, um, there's so much more, um, particularly in like the youth and grassroots. There's so many girls coming through now, which is really great to see. And people are starting to take it more seriously, which I think, you know, it's been a long time coming. No, definitely. And I think there's a real aspect, you know, we were in the Eden today chatting to Jack Grimmer and Gareth McCleary, and they were just doing a thing, like half-term hero, as it was called. But uh, you must find as well that especially, you know, young girls really look up to you and, and you know, what you're doing, even at, at the level that you're playing. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely quite nice. So I do do a bit of coaching on the side as well. Um, and I think it's just nice for them to have a female role model sometimes as opposed to a male. Because obviously, as you say, they can start to look at you as a role model and start to aspire to be like you. You know, women do deserve a place in the sport. And it's really nice that that is coming through now. Does it feel like you've sort of joined at Wickham at a really interesting time because, you know, they've had a new management and coaching structure just for this recently and, you know, just recently moved to, to Burnham and sort of got the dra- yeah, training on a Tuesday and Thursday at that ground as well. It feels like, you know, something, something really quite special is happening. Yeah, yeah, it is really nice. Um, obviously, I wasn't here beforehand, so I can't really comment on that. Um, but definitely the structure and setup that they seem to have, like, they really seem to have a good, good focus on the development of the players in the team and club as a general. Um, so I am really looking forward to seeing how we can progress, you know, through the coming seasons. And have you set yourself sort of personal and indeed sort of team goals as well as to, to what you'd like to achieve in the remainder of the season? Because obviously there's not too many league games left, but you're doing well in the cup as well. Uh, yeah, I think our main focus will probably be on the league right now, um, just to make sure we secure those points. I think we've got two league games left. So, you know, it'd be nice to get six points from those and just go as far as we can in the cup. So if we get a win at the weekend, that'd be great. So what's impressed you most so far about the, the team? Because there feels a real uh, feeling of togetherness and, and great character in, in the side as well to really battle back if they've gone behind in games. Yeah, definitely. And just the desire to kind of, you know, work for each other, um, not get frustrated at the little things. And this is really supportive. Great to chat to Gemma Dunn, who's obviously settling in very well with Wickham Wanderers women. Uh, a reminder that the first are in uh, League Cup quarterfinal action away at Bournemouth uh, this coming Sunday. You can find out more uh, details about uh, the other games with the reserves being at home at Burnham as well on their social media. Uh, this afternoon, we were at the uh, Eden Centre in town for uh, their uh, fantastic uh, initiative, Half Term Heroes. Uh, two Wickham Wanderers players are in attendance. Uh, first, a uh, friend of the show, Jack Grimmer. Oh, it's been amazing, mate, to be honest with you. The turnout was was better than we all could have ever expected. I think it shows, you know, the club's going in the right direction. We've got people, you know, coming out and wanting to be a part of it. And um, 
honestly as a player it makes you feel quite overwhelmed seeing how many people have came so honestly thank you to everyone that came down it was an amazing day and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and right backs can be heroes too they can indeed they can indeed you know I think um, Gary Neville once said obviously no one grows up wanting to be a Gary Neville but you know hopefully that that changes and um, you know everyone was so nice and so welcoming and uh, and I'm yeah you know the little things that we can do to make their day goes you know a long way because it's really nice, isn't it? Because people obviously are big fans of the club, big fans of the players, but you may have seen some people today who've, who've not been to a game before and might come along on Saturday as a result. Well, this is the thing. I was speaking to people today and their first game is going to be against Exeter or on Saturday, like you said, against Bolton. And and that is, you know, it, it's nice to sort of get that reach and get the, you know more fans through the door. Um, you know, Wickham is growing as a club. It has grown as a club so much since I've been here already. Um and you know it's nice to get those fans but it is also nice to, to you know speak to the season ticket holders the people that are following us all along the country um, and you know repay them with just more than three points it's nice to actually be face to face with them and you know get to get the chance to speak to them I really feel that backing as well from supporters in person as well and when you're on the pitch obviously you know that they're kind of there well, during your that's it I was, I was overwhelmed when I turned up and you know you see the length of the queue and things and it is nice to give back like I said in more ways than just on the pitch it's nice to do these things and you know, you don't know how much, you know, how long this can go for a kid if he meets you and then he goes up to play football. You know, you don't know what impact you're going to have. So, you know, anything that we can do to give back is is an amazing thing. Yeah, I'm sure. really nice to be doing it in, a, in such a rich vein of form for the team, four wins and, and going into the game on Saturday as well. I'm not going to lie, it does help uh, being here after four wins. You know, it's some of the best form I think we've had since I've been at the club. It does help. You know, you don't want to be doing these things probably having lost three on the bounce, but you know that's football it's ups and downs and um, I think it speaks volumes of our fans you know win, lose or draw they'll be there for us so it's uh, yeah like I said it's great to give back and as a defender do you sort of look forward to the challenge more of what's to come on Saturday bearing in mind you know Bolton have scored a lot of goals of late yeah uh, you're right I kind of thought the same thing against Derby they're probably one of the best front lines in the league and to te- that's who you want to be testing yourself again you know against um, you know the clean sheets have been We've managed to get a lot of clean sheets this season, but you know Saturday is the games that we need those clean sheets more than ever. Uh, Bolton are up there, and you know it's a great chance for us to sort of claw them back a little bit. Pleasure to speak to Jack Grimmer, uh, also very popular in the queue with uh, both the youngsters and some of the parents as well. Uh, it was Gareth McCleary. It was really good, really enjoyed it. Uh, lots of smiley faces on the kids and the parents too, obviously the amount of time that you have off with time off. With over half term, it was brilliant to see all the kids and that they're um, really enjoying it, so... Yeah, it's a bit of time out of mine and Jack's schedule, but we were in today and we, we came in and as long as everyone's happy, we're fine. And I'm sure you're much too modest to describe yourself as a hero, but it must be so nice for, for youngsters especially to sort of come and meet you and you know, who have been so impressed by the goals that you've scored or just what you do on the pitch. Yeah, well, the, I, I, I was having this conversation actually a few months ago. Uh, someone actually looking up to you and saying you're a hero of theirs um, it is, is surreal and yeah there were so many kids today that said that I've been playing well and it's just yeah if I can uh, bring smile on, smiles on the kids faces and, and the supporters faces that's, that's the main thing that I do it for does that make it all so worthwhile because you know that they're, you know, you come face to face with fans obviously at the ground as well but just to know that they're sort of supporting you and, and really sort of cheering for what you're doing yeah 100% I was a fan to it at, at one stage I uh, used to go to Ox United games and I I still do support Arsenal, so I totally understand where they're coming from. And um, yeah, if you can put a smile on on the fans' faces, that's the main thing. And especially with yourself and the team in such such good form at the moment, it must feel even better. Yeah, we're in good form at the moment. Uh, we know every game in League One's tough, and we've got a, a really hard one on Saturday against Bolton. But yeah, we've been playing really well at the moment, and hopefully we can get the win. Does it feel like things are really sort of clicking at the moment, as compared to you know earlier in the season? Early in the season, it may have just been run, run, the run of the green. We had um, a few injuries and, uh, yeah, we, we've got a lot of important players back and um, we're hitting form at the right time, I feel. But then come back to me in March and then we'll see, we'll see where we're at. We've got some, some tough games coming up, but I'm, I'm more than confident that we can uh, pick up the wins that we need to get into that play, those playoff places. And especially Saturday, a big game with Bolton coming as well. And I guess many of the youngsters that you met today will be coming along, hopefully, to, to sort of support you as well. Yeah, a lot did say that they were coming on Saturday and um, they will be coming on the 4th of March as well. So as, as many as we can see there. We had a, a Children's Day uh, early on in the season and it was probably the best atmosphere I've seen this season. So as many kids as possible that can come and, and cheer us on and as many supporters that can come and cheer us on, it, it definitely does help. So 
this is a sound out to everyone to come out and support us and um, hopefully we can get the win for you a great opportunity for the whole family at Eden Shopping Centre today uh, a little earlier on as well caught up with the manager on uh, what's been a, a week of mixed emotions at the club it's tough and, and in football you get this we've had Brian Lee who um, you know has had a fantastic uh, long life and, and, and made a real mark at Wickham Wanderers and football in general not just Wickham but people have got to uh, remember but um that was a really tough, tough sort of phone call or text message I got on Sunday of, of um, Bryn, his son, you know, because Brian had been a real big supporter of mine, and uh, I think these uh, these things you've got to you've got to put in perspective, and and you know that's that's somebody's dad and somebody's granddad and and great granddad even, you know, and and that's the key things for this, you know. He was a great, fantastic football man and and did a lot for Wickham Wanderers, and will always be remembered for that. But he's he, the, you know, the end of it all is a family man, and uh, and family's everything. So he was, you know, a real sort of pioneer in what he did here at Wickham Wanderers, and, and and we can't thank him enough for, for giving us the platform for this fantastic football club. And and then moving on to Alfie, obviously, um, in no way is as 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 serious or as sad, but your career, you know, to to have to finish your career, you know, is uh, it's a massive, massive moment in somebody's somebody's life you know I, I'm I'm so lucky that I've never had to have that moment I'm still trying to jog around on a Sunday morning and uh and I get pains and aches and but I but I, I I need football I love football so much so you know for Alfie at 28 29 years old to have to uh pack up because of his knee I'm just glad he's had the moments he's had and and he's made the impact he's had because he's had a super sort of quick rise to the top and really made his mark especially at Wickham and and for him to say to me that um, I love football again, Gaffer, because we because I came back to Wickham, all the trials and tribulations of being injured and all the heartache he must have gone through. And believe me, I don't care what anyone earns, what everyone's worth, what everyone's stature is. Once you're told you you can't really play football again, that's that's a big moment, you know. And and so Alfie falling back in love with the game because of Wickham is uh, is testament to him, all the boys around, and uh, you know I just feel for him and hopefully he can stick around and, and enjoy what he said he wants to enjoy, enjoy watching the boys again, enjoy getting involved with the boys, enjoy chatting to the boys on a daily basis or a weekly basis or whatever he wants to do. But, you know, that's down the line at the moment. We just want to make sure that Alfie's OK and uh, he's setting his head with what he wants to do and how he's going to attack life now uh, without turning out on a Saturday, you know. So um, that's, that's another big one. But, um you know, I mentioned Alfie before the game actually at Accrington and said to the boys, "You got to, got to keep hold of what you've got." You know, you make every moment count, and um, you know. So, if anything, uh, the boys were well aware at any moment things can be taken from you. So, give your all. And uh, Alfie certainly did in his career, and he'll be welcome here with his family at any any time. And, and obviously, Brian's a big part of this place. But um, the clock keeps moving, time keeps going, and we've got Bolton now to look at Saturday, and that'll come around quick. And we've got to make sure that we're we're prepared and on it again and um, and keep this this fantastic run going. Obviously, it feels like a really good time to be going into into these games with, with the, the four wins and, and not conceding too many goals either. And obviously, you come up against a team who have been scoring quite a lot of late and, and not letting many in themselves. <laughs> Two five nils, yeah, we've got to look. I've got to watch these uh, and find out a way out to, to beat Bolton. And uh, when you're watching 10 goals go again, the opposition and none, none against Bolton, it's going to be a tough ask. But um, again, I believe in my voice. I believe we've got enough in this uh, in this building to to make this top six. And yeah, Bolton's going to be a big test for us on Saturday. But I'm sure Ian Evans uh, thinking exactly the same thing about coming to Wickham Wanderers. And it must sort of please you so much that I know you've said before, but you look at the the league table and the, just the, the sort of the structure of the, the top six and the names there, and then and then next in the in the list is Wickham Wanderers. Yeah, you know we can't discount Shrewsbury Town who made some brilliant signings at the start of the year, and I said. They'll be there and thereabouts, definitely. But to have our name again in it all, I, I have a little chuckle to myself sometimes when people think we're a big club and people actually, because they've only seen the last five years probably of Wickham Wanderers history, go back a little bit further and you can <laughs> you can find some chaotic moments. But um, there's no way we should be uh, we should be nestled in amongst your Derby's and your your Ipswiches and your and your your Barnes's and Bolton's, but. We're around there, and uh, and it's brilliant to be around there. I'm really, really proud of what we achieved here, and uh, like I said, I'll keep keep pushing and keep fighting and keep getting these boys out, believing they can win every game because we can. We've got good players in this place, and uh, obviously can't thank everyone who's walked through this door. Um, the current. 
people in charge and, and everyone who, who works for me. Just that it's an awesome place to be and uh, and I got got something really special. When you know you, you got belief, you got players who want to run through brick walls for you. And uh, as a manager, that is all you need. You don't need anything else. We spoke to John Maskell this week, and he was saying that that Brian Lee and, and yourself they had the team playing in a very similar way. Does it really feel like you're uh, sort of building on on what's gone before and, and really sort of carrying the club forward? It's nice because obviously we were built as this uh, direct long ball team for many a year with Akin Fenway in the team. I, I think my, one of my big strengths, Colin, is always um, adapting to the situation. I always say it to everybody. Say, what's your biggest strength? I'll say it's an adaptation. I'll, I'll adapt during a game, before a game, um, for the next game. I'll adapt to whatever I think will win the game. My job is to win the game. My job is not play a style of football that everyone wants which sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, sometimes it's in the middle. I have to win games. So I have to find out what it will take to win a game. And sometimes I've got a Ford Escort against a, a Ferrari. And in that race, I've got to somehow get that Ford Escort up and, and beating that Ferrari. And there's ways to do it. And you've got to make sure that we are competing at that top level and, and I'll find a way to do it. But having said that, I couldn't do it without the boys and the staff around me. They're, they're brilliant. And to be compared to someone like Brian Lee is a very, very, you know, a humble moment to me because they say he was considered one of the best. And um, and that's a very nice comment from uh, from John to say that. And that's something that really stood out on Tuesday as well after the uh, the Accrington game was that, you know, the way you said that you know, had to change things in the second half and had the, had the subs back after half time as well to kind of explain it. And that must be so pleasing as well that the players can adapt in that way too. Yeah, I didn't come out, if people will notice, I didn't come out for the second half until probably just about kickoff. I just was walking out the tunnel. And, and the reason for that is that once the six outfield subs came in, I wanted to explain to them what I was going to do after 10 minutes because um, I really thought that, OK, we, we just had the better of the sports first half, but there was a couple of issues. I wanted to give it another 10 minutes to go and see if we could get another goal. And if we didn't, I was going to make us more secure and this is how I was going to do it. And all the subs were going to play a part. So um, I showed the subs what they were going to do on the tactics board and, and that was important rather than going out and watching, you know, the, the first 30 seconds, it was more important to get those messages in. And I'll have to say that they all made a huge impact when they came on, you know, really pleased with them. And, uh, and I thought we looked here towards the end, um, you know, Chris Farino coming back was a big positive and, and Gareth McCleary and TJ coming on, and Nick Freeman again, you know, all, all these players who came on really making, making their part count and, uh, and that was that was important, but it, it shows what a squad game this is, and, and how important the whole the whole team, the whole the whole eighteen is sometimes. And I know many of the players uh, just finally said that the the visit of Derby was one of the best atmospheres of, of the season. Uh, I think this coming Saturday could uh, equal, if not top, that with with another big club coming to Adams Park. <laughs> it will if we can get enough Wickham fans down there, because uh, we keep saying it. You know, can you come down and support the boys? Because uh, I remember Bolton coming here two or three years ago when they were in uh, absolute peril and. and you know they were looking at administration down the down the barrel of a gun, and and I think they they had a great respect for Wickham that day of of how we um, how we empathised with them really because we've been in similar situations and uh, and we made the day really special for them even though I think we beat them on the first game of the season it was a moment where two clubs um, came together and and to, to fight against you know this uh, this finance thing in football that is is out of control sometimes so. I'm expecting a uh, nice atmosphere, good atmosphere, great game of football and uh, we're the best team win. Lots to look forward to on Saturday. Uh, obviously, if you have the chance to uh, get to Adams Park, uh, do go along and uh, back the Blues. If you can't get to the game for whatever reason, you'll hear live commentary here on Wickham Sound uh, from three, match build up from two. Uh, Phil and uh, another co-commentator. That's yet to be as it's TBD, I think. Uh, but, but it'll definitely be someone uh, bringing you uh, all that uh, build up from the car park uh, from 12 o'clock uh, with Rob and the team as well. Hope you've enjoyed the Wicked Wonder show for this week. It's been brilliant to bring you uh, the uh, tribute to Brian Lee uh, from two players who played under him and to hear from the manager as well. Uh, have a fantastic week, and we'll be back at the same time next Thursday from 7 the Wicked Wonder show here on Wickham Sound.